1991, Bruce Willis was big news at the box office. Coming off the success of his turns in TV's hit Moonlighting, as the voice of a talking baby in Look Who's Talking 1 and 2, and, of course, that pair of alleged Christmas movies, Die Hard 1 and 2, everything Willis touched was rubbed by the palm of Midas himself. If you ignore Bonfire of the Vanities. So surely, teaming him up with the mega Hollywood producer Joel Silver and the director of the critically acclaimed Heathers, Michael Lehman, would ensure another golden plaque upon the Willis mansion toilet wall covered with gems and stuff with a big title that said Hudson Hawk is the bomb, which they would all gather around him and Demi Moore. I don't know if they were together then, but they'd gather around and they'd look at it and they'd go, that's magnificent, what a great movie Hudson Hawk was. I don't really know how these film types celebrate success. Maybe they just eat a bowl of curry in front of, like, Bargain Hunt or something. Well, the answer to that meandering question is no. It wasn't a success. Which is why it's on a video about games based on flop movies. Hudson Hawk was a slapstick heavy comedy about the eponymous Eddie Hudson Hawk Hawkins and his cat burglar ways. All Eddie wants on his first day out of prison is to have a nice cup of chino or a cappuccino. Unfortunately, he is blackmailed before he can wrap his lips around the cup by a mafia family, the CIA and his own parole officer blackmailing him into doing a variety of dangerous art heists with his singing partner in crime, Tommy Five-Tone Messina. There ensues a lot of them singing and uh, trying to break into stuff. Uh, It's all part of a bigger plot by a sinister corporation to build an invention designed by Leonardo da Vinci that turns lead into gold. These bloody alchemists. Gold is a hussy. Lead is the metal you want to marry, even though it poisons you. Uh, It does it out of love, though. Abusive love from metal. Maybe gold is better than Richard E. Grant was right all along. We've got the real deal. Money will always be paper, but gold will always be gold. The movie was not well received by critics, as proved by its 26% Rotten Tomato score and its three Razzies. Ouch. Audiences were also nonplussed with Mr. Hawk's chicanery, with the box office taking just $17.2 million in ticket sales from a budget of $65 million. Tank a Rooney. People were way more interested in seeing Hannibal Lecter in The Silence of the Lambs at this point. Ocean Software never scared of an unknown movie property, as evidenced by their uh, rightful backing of Robocop, stomped up the cash for the Hudson Hawk licence for release in 1991 to go alongside the movie. They clearly had lofty hopes for the success of the film, as they commissioned Liverpool Coders special effects to make the game for the Amiga, the Atari ST, the Commodore 64, the Amstrad CPC and the Spectrum with Sony ImageSoft handling the US distribution for versions for the NES and the Game Boy. Special effects were highly regarded at the time, featuring the talents of coders such as Jonathan Joffa Smith and James Bagley. They were behind the incredible Spectrum version of Midnight Resistance, along with excellent titles such as The Untouchables, Robocop 2, Cabal and Batman the Caped Crusader. As was the tradition of the Ocean movie license, Hudson Hawk was a side-scrolling platformer. It didn't really follow the movie particularly well, and special effects chose to use super-deformed Bruce Willis and make him into a cutesy character with an oversized head. I don't actually mind the look of the game, as although Hudson Hawk is a, a cool character in the movie, The rest of the production is a surrealist whirlpool of complete nonsense. 
I'm set up in the back. Can you fucking believe it? Yeah, that's probably what happened. I think its silliness sits pretty well. The game really plays up to the ridiculousness of the movie with killer dachshunds, rhinos causing havoc in the Vatican, killer nuns, and uh, defecating birds that crap on you from above that can all be damaged by just Hudson Hawk's useful array of weapons, the baseball and the boxing glove. Yes. I think that the look of the game and its general direction uh, for capturing the feel of the movie, rather than the look of it, is perfectly acceptable. Uh, it's an oddball, bizarre treatment that makes me think that Ocean saw what was brewing with the movie and just went, uh, you know what, guys, just do what you want. Put out a good game. Fine. It's a game that requires a bit of play to get used to its little quirks. Sometimes there are some quite tricky puzzles, and it's got some quite janky inertia in its control system. The gameplay encourages you to keep moving, but to plan ahead at times, and to avoid various perils like spring-loaded traps and guard dogs that will return you to the start of the level, which can be very frustrating. All in all, it feels like a, a very European platform game, uh, which is why I think it works better on the home computers than on the uh, Nintendo consoles. There are undoubtedly classic platformers on the computer formats of the time that still stand up today, but there was a definite polish, attention to detail in control method, level and character design in platform games that Capcom, Konami, Sega and Nintendo had that the European and American software houses of the time just didn't have. The extra button for jumping on the Nintendo consoles helped of course, as did probably the larger teams compared to the minimum amounts of staff and sometimes just bedroom coders of the 8 and 16 bit era on the computers. Which is why Although Hudson Hawk is an excellent computer platformer, it's merely mediocre on the NES and the Game Boy, despite being the same game as the others. Magazine reviews reflected this, with all three major Spectrum magazines actually singing Hudson Hawk's praises in unison for a change, along with uh, very positive reviews in Atari ST User, Commodore Format, Zap and Ace. The Nintendo ones, uh, they've not been remembered in a great light, with famous internet game critic Sean Baby rating it as the 17th worst game of all time and defunct games giving it a rough time in their review. My review, it's okay. Having experienced the best of both worlds of the 8-bit computers and the NES as a kid, I can appreciate Hudson Hawk for what it is, but understand the criticism from those who had the likes of Mario and Mega Man in their lives as children instead of Monty Mole and Minor Willy. Oh, and spoiler, he gets his cappuccino at the end. Okay, thanks, but I... <laughs>